Welcome back to the Young Shakespeare Podcast. Today, I have the pleasure of talking to Tommy Sarney. He is a state champ. He is a champ of champs, uh, a legend at St. John's Prep Hockey, and just uh, the other day, a lacrosse state champion. Tommy, how does it feel? You guys crushed BC High, D1 state champs. How does that feel to end off your high school career? It feels, uh, feels amazing. It's always fun beating those guys. You know, they're a great squad, great coaching, but it's always fun, you know. Yeah. How did it how did it go down? I know it was close at halftime and then the third quarter, you guys kind of made some moves. What do you think was the difference and what allowed you guys to grab a W? Yeah, for sure. Uh, we didn't we didn't change much, you know, in the huddle at the half. Coach Pinchon just said, you know, keep doing our thing, keep playing our brand of lacrosse. So, I mean, uh, you know, they uh, they stuck with us the first half. But, you know, we uh, we started in a way, you know, once we score one or two. Uh, as you've as you've seen, uh, it just creates a little ripple effect, and you just keep building off of that. And our defense, I think they scored one goal in the second half, so that helped a ton. Yeah, I was reading uh, the Herald article about the game that just came out, and it was saying how it was some uh, quote from Coach Pinchon saying, essentially there was like a nervous tension in the air when it was kind of close. Like, dude, I love that the way you just scratch your face, you just got the rings going. That's pretty. You brought you brought the trophy, right? Yeah, I got. I got the medals. I <laughs> have the trophy here too. So, so did you just walk off the field and take the trophy? Like, how did that happen? Yeah, um, I don't know. We had it on the bus, and nobody asked for it. So, like I said, <laughs> I just decided to take it. But I'll, I'll bring it back to the to the office soon. So, don't want to yeah. keep that in good condition, you know? Right. Yeah. Definitely, no one took it to any parties. I know that for sure. No. God, no. <laughs> Not a terrible that. idea. Terrible idea to do that. Oh, that won't be done. Um, but that's pretty funny that you just kind of walked off with it. Uh, well, well earned. Well deserved. Is where's the hockey one at? Is that in a trophy case? No, nah, the hockey one, I believe it's either at the rink in the trophy case or in the uh, athletic office trophy case. So that one's in good hands right now. Crazy. Yeah. It yeah. And back to that's just a really funny that you brought that. But back to the question, it was um yeah, Pinchon was saying um, there was sort of he was telling you guys, hey, stay calm, sort of stay in the system. What was what was the from your vantage point? What was the energy like on the field? What were guys saying? I wouldn't say we were nervous. I would say we were, you know, we we didn't play a ton of close games, you know, as bad as that might sound. But, you know, that's fine mm -hmm. because, you know, he, uh, he prepares us for everything. So he just said, keep doing your thing. And you know, everybody stayed calm. And that's, that's the uh, most important part, you know. You said focus on your breathing, you know, be where your feet are, control you can control. And, you know, we just – we uh, we started playing better in the second half and, you know, the rest is history, so. Yeah. What was the environment like? What was the the turnout, both you guys, BC High and SJP, at crazy student sections? What, what was the energy like? Set the scene for me. No, that energy was awesome. I mean, that game at the venue that it was, it was, it was packed, a lot of people there. Student sections were nice, you know, it's always fun, you know, seeing your boys up there cheering you on, you know, it's also, it's even better though, having those BC High kids, you know, screaming your name, chirping you, all that, so you got to love that, that's part of it, you know, that's how it goes. They're, they're really creative, those guys, I was talking to Jose Padilla, he was in the state championship for um, Newton North and mm -hmm. uh, basketball, and they were playing against Chirp Nation, the infamous and he told me, I can't remember if he said this on the interview or off. I think he said it on the interview that uh, the BC High kids were like figured out like what his like little sister's name was and was like yelling things at him and he could hear it like crazy. Like <laughs> they like do their research. These are like high school kids doing their research. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't think that happened in my case, but, you know, it's always it's always funny. That's going to happen in competitive sports. You know, people are going to want to take you off your game. And mm -hmm. I mean. It's unfortunate that happened to him, but, you know, kudos to them because they're doing their part if they're in somebody's head during the game, so. Yeah, I think he just laughed it off. He's a pretty cool guy. Yeah, um, good. Definitely, that's the that's BC high for you. They got that crazy energy. What, um, if anything, was the message coming out? You guys had two tough losses in a row, AB and then Staples, who obviously, I think they were the Connecticut State champs. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Stud team from Connecticut, AB. Uh, a great team, but obviously not a loss you guys would have wanted to take. Mm -hmm. What was what went wrong there, and then what did you guys have to change? So I would I don't think you know 
too much went wrong. It just wasn't our night. You know, we weren't getting our bounces. Uh, they played a great zone defense against us. I, they shut off me and Jimmy. I know that the rain didn't help. You know, their fans weren't helping us, of course. And, you know, it was, you know, like I said earlier, it was a ripple effect, you know, one mistake on top of mistake. And, you know, once you get so buried and, you know, once you get so far into your own head, it's just, it's hard to come back from that. But they played great. You know, kudos to them. They were sticking their shots, you know, doing everything they could. And, um, you know, it was a tough loss, but, you know, we went back to work, went down to Staples. We played a really tight game with them. And um, mm. I believe it was, I forget the score, but it was a close game. You know, they had their goalie was a stud. I think he's going to Colby. Um, he oh. covered me going to Brian. You know, they had some they had some good commits. Another province commit. Um, you know, they they played great. It was hard playing there, but you know that's that's a great team. That's a powerhouse. You know, they uh, they beat Darian, who's you know a stud team. Also, I believe they're from Connecticut too. So you know, they're they're a powerhouse. You know, it was really fun going down there. You know, getting the locker room, walking out to the music. You know, they had some fans, this and that. So it was it was a good environment to play. In, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Was that did that loss kind of, you know, actually, here's a better question. What were you expecting going down to Connecticut to play them? Obviously, they've got such a tradition. What was the expectation? Just, you know, that's interesting because we obviously knew they were a sick team, but, you know, we also know that we're a very good team also. And uh, we just wanted to go down there and play our best across, you know, disregard the outcome. We, uh, we played well. We learned from our mistakes and we, uh, we just went down there and figured it was a work day. So you just get on the field. It was another day to play lacrosse. So yeah. it's always nice to have that. Yeah, I read in an article that you guys is and correct me if I'm wrong. You kind of have like a circle after games, and you kind yeah. of discuss it. What what was the discussion like after those two games? Uh, I would say the circle after the Staples game compared to the AB game was a little a little better. You know, nobody nobody was thrilled. Heads were down like after AB. But, you know, we went down to Connecticut, you know, played a, played a good team. We played a good game, but uh, they, they hit their shots. We didn't. So that's how it goes. But the circle was good. You know, it was just see you tomorrow in the weight room, 630 in the morning, you know, right back at it, another chance to, another chance to be with the boys. So that's always nice. Yeah, I think a lot of people would be fascinated to hear more about the mechanics of the circle. Like, is that is is more of it being made than it is? Or is that really like a place where you guys discuss what happened? Like, what, what does it actually look like in practice? You know, we do that after everything, whether it's a, whether it's film or practice or games. But, you know, it's more just a, uh, it's, it's it's hard to explain because mm -hmm. we've been doing it for so long. And I don't think much of it now. But, you know, nobody does that. So we do the circle. Coach will say some coaches will say some things, you know, a couple guys, captains, senior leaders will say that. And then we always finish it with our like Eagles team, Eagles team, Eagles team first chance because, you know, the team is first, obviously. And Coach Pinchot always harps on this. He goes, that's his favorite part of the day, favorite part of the practice. Everybody coming together and, you know, saying that little chance. So that's always nice. Is that a little bit less special when you're playing BC High and they're also the Eagles? Is that, a, is that in conflict at all? that's I don't that's funny you say that I don't really think too much of it because I keep forgetting that they're the Eagles we just call them BC high but I don't I don't know it's it was it was weird playing against them at Saugus for hockey because you know the Eagles of BC high Eagles St. John's you know we didn't we didn't think too much of it you know because that, yeah. that's our thing so yeah I suppose it's just such a so ingrained in like your identity it's crazy to see you guys match up against Connecticut's like elite team how, I always love to ask this question. One of my favorite questions for lax guys, especially. How do you think St. John's Prep would match up with the best of the ISL? I think I think we we play a good game. You know, I'm not going to say we'd kill them or they'd kill us, obviously, but I think it would be a good competitive game. You know, the ISL is stacked. You know, Govs had a great year. Hmm. Um, Nobles is discussing with Chad. So, I mean, I think, I think it'd be good games. You know, I, I, we were supposed to, we were trying to scrimmage an ISL team last year, but, you know, I don't think our athletic department let that happen. Uh, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. But I just, I, I, it would be fun. Because last year, I, I believe Boston Lax came out with rankings for the MIA and ISL. Hmm. And I believe we were third. And then I, we started talking. I was like, you know, I, I, like, I wish we could play Bell Hill, you know, Sabs, like these types of teams. 
I, I think it'd be a good game. I think it'd be fun. 100%. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people that would pay, would pay to see that. They would use their little MIA app, if even if they had to, which I, I despise mm-hmm. they do that. Why can't they just take cash at the gate? I have no idea. I don't know. Maybe, Maybe. less lines or something. I, I don't know. I think it's weird buying, you know, $10 ticket to a to a high school game. You know, just want to support your local guys, but yeah. that's how the MI works, man. That's how it goes. So yeah, at least there's enough seating. Like in basketball, I mean, I suppose by the end they'd start to play at like Holy Cross and different places like that. But there yeah. are some games when it was like home territory where people had to like line up to get just a spot in the gym and for like the sectional finals and stuff like yep. that. Cool. Yeah. I, I wish I went to more basketball games. Don't think I ever went to one. Really? You didn't go to any? Were you just I, 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 I would go to or? a couple. I would, uh, you know, we had hockey, you know, all the time. So every time we, every time they played, we would have practice or something, but you know, guys on the basketball team are great. They uh, showed a lot of support for us in the hockey, hockey yeah. running. So that was nice. Yeah, I have to ask too about obviously the hockey state championship. You had four goals, Division One championship. I mean, how electric did that feel? Like, you know, with your team, but also like, I, I, you're obviously a very humble guy. But I think people were wondering, like, what did that feel like to score four goals in the state championship? That's like a movie or something. No, that was uh, that was amazing. You know, to be quite honest, I don't really remember the like the feeling of the game. You know, you just the adrenaline gets pumping. Yeah. You know, you forget some things, but that was amazing. Um, two two of them were empty nets, obviously, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, it was it was just nice. It was just nice winning with the team. You know, safe to say we got it done. That was our goal from uh, the Monday after Thanksgiving. So it was it was amazing. It was it was one of the best days of my life. Winning yeah. that because I saw my brother win at the garden, I saw him lose at the garden, so it was nice that he, uh, he got to do the same for me. Yeah, and what's it like skating at TD Garden? It was the Bruins logo, it, everything. It was awesome. I mean, you coming out with the bright lights, the jumbotron, the music, you know, like the even the glass, like the glass that gives, you know, that we had to use different pucks during warm ups so it wouldn't stain the boards. It was, Whoa. it was just like. Playing up, going on the bench, there's like TVs, you know, right at your feet for the coaches to look at stuff. It was amazing. It was unlike anything I've ever been a part of. Crazy, crazy. Mm-hmm. What was the like level of confidence going into that state championship? Was it different than lacrosse? I would uh, it was similar. It was similar. I would think I was, you know, extremely confident going into all, all three of those, all three of the championship games. But, you know, hockey was just, I feel like hockey is different. You know, mm. we we just work so hard and we do so much stuff, you know, that nobody sees. And I feel like that's a, you know, has to be a direct correlation to the success because, you know, I don't think, you know, us doing all that, you, you got to deserve it. I mean, I, that's, I was, I wasn't too, too nervous. I was more excited, you know, ready to showcase our, uh, showcase our team. So, and, you know, coach Pinchon always says there's good pressure and there's bad pressure. You know, the good pressure is the stuff that you're prepared for. You know, we were prepared for that game and all, all the, and the other two games. So it was, uh, it was nice. Wow. Absolutely. And it's really cool too, to just see like the crossover of a bunch of the guys that are the studs in lacrosse are also on the hockey team, like how it goes hand in hand. Like, obviously those guys are probably like brothers to you. What's that? I mean, the, the multi-sport thing is pretty cool. Talk about like the athleticism of, of those teammates. No, it's, I mean, Sacraposa, Jimmy Ayers, Jake Vanna, you know, I've a couple other guys. I'm not forgetting their names, but I don't know. It's amazing. You know, I wouldn't say it's more of an athleticism thing. I'd say it's more of like, you know, you want it, you're going to go grab it. And it's about, you know, all the culture in that room, you know, everybody shares the same goal. And, you know, once everybody, you know, just sticks to that and is willing to, uh, willing to sacrifice anything, it's just, it's something, something special starts to form and, you know, it, nothing gets in the way of that. Nothing gets in the way of, you know, hoisting that trophy at the end of the season. Mm. You know, that's that's a feeling that will motivate you, you know, going into another season. That's exactly why you play. It's to hoist that and just do it with your buddies. It's it's so special doing it with your friends. It creates that brotherhood and moment that you guys will never forget. Damn. I like that. I like that a lot. I was talking to my, I know I know you know this guy, Mike uh, Flano Flanagan. Flano, yeah, he's beautiful. He's a beauty. I was talking to him uh, on the phone uh, a little bit earlier today and I told him about our interview and he was saying, I said, well, Oh, what do you think I should ask me? I said, ask him what it feels like to be 
the most accomplished St. John's prep athlete in history. Now, I don't know if you would a- accept that title. Uh, that's, that's obviously uh, put you on the spot a little bit, but mm. as far as, you know, the athleticism and the accomplishment and the leadership, I would be curious to hear, what do you, what do you hope your mark or your legacy is at St. John's prep? What do you hope people say about Tommy Sarney and, and how you change things? Um he left it better than he found it. You know, he left the program in a better spot than he, uh, he got there. And, you know, he uh, just wanted to win, wanted to do whatever it takes with his friends, with his brothers, you know, that's, that's about it. As long as you're, as long as you're getting it done with your boys, you know, it, it, it just doesn't matter. Cause that's, that's the best feeling talking about it, you know, months later, looking at your Snapchat memories or your Instagram stories, stuff like yeah. that. It's very nice reliving it. Your Visco. The Visco, of course. Yep. <laughs> Which everyone has. Um, of course. Not just me, mom. Um, yeah, I have one too. Like, everybody relax. <laughs> what? Uh, oh, shit. That got me off track a little bit. Um, <laughs> um, with that, like, mentality you're talking about, did you always have the will to win? Or do you think that's something you developed over time? Uh you know, you I don't grew know. Up, like seeing your brother and stuff like that. Were you always like a competitor? Always like win, win, win. Yeah, I mean, uh, like, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like, I would play, you know, Xbox with my little brother, who's a couple years younger than me, and I'd never let him win, dude. I would always just crack him, do my best, you know, chirp him, all this and that. But you know, it's, it's just fun, you know, just saying. I, I did better than you. You wanted it more, stuff like that. You know, it's mm. it's all about the will and what you're willing to sacrifice to what you want to become. So I mean, yeah. It, yeah. I, I think I've always been like that. You know, it doesn't matter any game or practice or this or that, like little stuff. So it's funny that kind of energy I always think is infectious. Like on yeah. the sports team, I really do think that's what culture is. Mm-hmm. I saw personally. Um, I was a uh, I did track in high school, and my mom was the high school track coach at Dover Sherber. And there was kind of a span. I'd watched her team for years. She took over when I was in like sixth grade or something. And I saw her kind of transform a program from where before it was a sport where kids would come and socialize and dick around mm-hmm. and not take it serious. They right. wouldn't even know if they won the dual meets or not. Mm-hmm. And then over the course of a few years, just a few people, a few captains, a few leaders we're all about competing and running track workouts, running 400 repeats. So you vomit like crazy competitive people. And it's at the point now where they're always contending for winning tri-valley league titles, always yep. within a few points of the state championship. They haven't grabbed one yet, but it's a, uh, it's, it's a thick division, but it's crazy. That it's like culture kind of emanates from sometimes you know, just that shared common place of just a few people. hundred mm-hmm. percent. I couldn't agree more, you know, coach pinch on harps on culture a lot. And that's something that we've had in, you know, every, every team I've been a part of culture is a big thing. I, I just, you know, knowing your core values and then knowing your process goals and your end goals. It's just, I mean, it's amazing what it does. It's, in, it's amazing what coach pinch on has done. You know, I saw a tweet since 2017, He's went eight and ten, then ten and ten, and then he went to the Division One semifinals. My freshman year, lost to LS, then had no season, and then you know we went back to back. So he's just what he's done. It has just completely transformed the program. Yeah. yeah what do you think makes Coach Pinchon so successful and so special as a coach? <sighs> I don't think I could pick out any any one thing. It's just everything he says is so infectious, and it's just like you know he is the type of coach that'll make you run through a wall. But you know you can also go up and ask him. You know, coach, what did you have to dinner last night? Like you can talk to him about anything. Mm-hmm. He's a great guy, and I mean, Providence alum, go Friars. You know, he's it's <laughs> it's, just, it's it's awesome. You know, I I love that guy. I told him yesterday. I said I'm so grateful for you. Like. Not only is he a great coach, he's a great guy. Like I said to him yesterday, said I wouldn't be the you know person I am without you. You know, outside of sports, so mm-hmm. he's a uh, he's a great guy, and it's, he's got an awesome little son too, little John, great yeah. kid. Yeah, I love to hear that. That's just special that connection, man. Hundred percent, hundred percent. How do you like the looks of a three peat next year? 
I'm not going to rule anything out. You know, they have a they have a sick team. You know, Jimmy Harris coming back, Jake Van will be healthy. You know, Espo at the X. I mean, and the the coaching staff, unreal. The amount of film that we watch and the meetings and the lifting, it's it's hmm. it's it's hard not to be so good when you're doing so much off the field. So it's um, it's it's unreal. Yeah. It's unreal. They they'll be good, and they got a great goalie, Gavin. Um, he's a stud. He learned a lot from Teddy this year. No, it's, I don't know. I'm excited. I wish, wish I wasn't leaving. You know, I wish I could be there with the guy, <laughs> but you know, you gotta move on. So that's what makes it so sweet. Yeah. I got I'm glad you brought this guy up because I have to ask about the toughness of Vanna. I was uh, told that he actually came into the state championship with a broken wrist, uh, and still scored a goal. What did you see from that dude? Is that true? Was he, he was really playing with a broken wrist? Yes, he uh, he broke it against Bill Ricca and got cleared on Monday and then didn't practice Monday. Or he went like lights, like no equipment, like helmet gloves like that, and then just stepped into a state championship game. And I think he put up two points. Like that's, that's, no, that doesn't happen. That kid, his work ethic is unreal. And he, he has a big part in the culture. You know, he went, he's been in every practice, every lift, every meeting, every film session when he was hurt. And that is the kind of that that's the kind of things that happen at St. John's. You know, everybody has the same will to win. And it's just it's super infectious because when you see guys like that come in and support the team, it just makes you want to want to do well for them. Yeah, it has to fire you up to see a guy like that 100%. risking himself, risking yep. himself like that. Mm -hmm. Crazy. He actually played with uh, with like a little wrist cast right here. They had to like cut his glove. Like he didn't even take it off. Like it, it was, it was, it was ridiculous watching him, you know, oh. go around and do that. Oh my God. That's a, yep. that's a very good doctor to give him the, the okay. Knowing the state championship comes up. Exactly. exactly. Like I don't yes, need to risk this. He was song. cleared. It's, he wasn't, you know, playing against the doctor's rules. He was cleared to play. So. Yeah, that's good. You want someone that understands the importance and just goes in and, and gets it done. I that, wonder how that affected him or if like the adrenaline was so crazy that he just didn't affect him or if like every time he caught the ball, it was just was like crazy painful. I hundred percent. I actually haven't asked him how it felt. I just said, you're a stud. <laughs> Nobody does that. Nobody breaks your wrist and then goes, goes and plays and, you know, does that in a championship game. So it's, uh, it just motivates, you know, it just motivates you even more to win with guys like that. It's awesome. Shout out. Crazy. That is a big, thing i'm assuming growing up like playing hockey too you were talking about the trials and tribulations and how hockey is a grueling sport that's definitely a sport where you're always getting injuries i'm gonna assume and playing where it's like are you hurt or injured kind of thing yeah, like i play rugby and you never like finish a oh. game where you're like oh that was like i'm fine you always finish <laughs> and you're like how bad is this my uh, one of my best friends plays rugby austin hart shout out hart he's going to clemson to play that, that kid was running at me full speed i'm i'm just walking the other way he's, <laughs> he's a moose he's dude i might awesome. see him now i play i play for nc state so maybe oh I'll no see way him. yeah you could play you probably play right down in the neighborhood that would be pretty yeah. cool that'd be awesome rugby yeah. had a good season too i believe they lost in the semifinals you know they're they're a great team too we saw them i mean there's like four teams but oh, yeah <laughs> what else do you guys play oh um I don't know. Like, I mean, as far as like MIAA goes, there's like, they, that's there's, like so new. Yeah, no, there's not a ton of. It's so, players. it's very cool. As a rugby player, I like it. I might have mm -hmm. to start doing some rugby interviews, but that's like, I feel like over the next four or five years, you're going to see it explode, at least in the 100%. MIA. I bet it's going to like eightfold the number of teams there are because oh, it's yeah, kind of niche right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, and the prep rugby team is pretty good too. Love watching them. They were they come to a lot of our games. We would see them in the training rooms, you know, ice and tape with their ankles. Those guys are troopers. I could never play that. Could never ever do that. What sucks is there's so many turf fields around. Yeah, I was I don't noticing to... these kids are playing on turf for anyone that's ever like that's never played rugby. Turf is excruciating because like almost like every time you're involved in a play, you're gonna end up on the ground pretty much. And yep. you're just burnt all over like yeah that. that's rugby never needs to be played on grass 100 100 percent. crazy How, yeah i gotta ask too about uh um, mustache tommy 
We, oh, do you think God. the stash? Do you think the stash? Like I was like, that was just a beautiful, beautiful stash you had in the fucking state championship at hockey. Do you think that's like, like you know, there's like Ramadan Kyrie. Do you think the mustache yep. helped you? Ah, uh, I don't know. I, I'm very superstitious. So last year, uh, last year in the for lacrosse, we uh we went stashes and mullets. This year at hockey, we went stashes and mullets. And this year, so I had a mullet for hockey and then cut it all off. So I grew back a little bit and I said, all right, boys, I can't get a mullet. So I'm just going to get a buzz cut. And then like seven and eight of the guys started just shaving their heads. It was awesome. <laughs> it was, it was, it was wicked funny. Seeing everybody walk around like, you know, just like this. It was, it was cool. Yeah. And stuff like that. I mean, that you, that you can build a relationship just by literally having the same haircut as someone. Mm. It's, it's crazy to say, but you know, walking around with you know, six other guys with buzz cuts, you know, that, that creates a good little bond. And that's, I'm sure that, that's got to translate onto the field of their eyes. It's, I'm telling you. Dude, you should see the connection gingers have. If I see another ginger walking around, I don't even, I don't even <laughs> like the Jeep know wave. Him. I don't have to know him, dude. I'm going to be like, you've been through some shit. I'm going to be like, I know, <laughs> I know what you've been through, man. You oh, know. gosh. You can always, you know, a ginger. You always, we always have each other's backs, dude. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. It's a, it's a way of life. <laughs> yeah, haircuts. That's my brother plays for the uh, Dover Sherburn team. Mm -hmm. um, and they won a state title last year and then unfortunately lost to sandwich in a heartbreaker in the semifinals this year and he got the mullet he kind of didn't have enough letty to make it like a real mullet but he's it's real enough that he looks like pretty dumb so yeah. that's cool enough that's fine i mean some guys oh some of their mullets were bad like they were shaved up to here like bald like uneven because some we were doing them to each other. It was oh no, it was just hilarious. like the guys going through with it. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, get the clippers, tie it up, and just go like this. So <laughs> I did a couple myself, but you know, it's 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 hilarious seeing the seeing their parents' reactions. What did you do to my son's head? Now they they let us, they let us. So that's nice. Obviously, we did them at we did them at home or you know at at someone's house or like that. You know, never never on campus. That's a big no no. Yeah, that, that's some sort of violation, right? Gotta be. It's gotta be. <laughs> it's gotta be. Yeah, it's, no, the MIA is like stalling. I don't know if you can say this now that you're finished, but I hate the MIAA. Yeah, I mean, they, they give us some pretty cool trophies, so I got nothing bad to say about it. <laughs> I just, the one thing I'll say is that the rating system works so well. Like, if you look at all the state championships, it was like, out of all the divisions in lacrosse, the semifinals Dover Sherburn was tied with another team for having the worst seed to get in to, to the final four and all the divisions and they were the five seed so the power rating system they use where they use everyone bitched about it in the fall oh this doesn't yep. make any sense oh if you're from this, no, you're conference, right. this conference it 100% works out the right way everyone's like oh Everett's a nine seed like that's crazy or whatever and then they lost in football like the rating system works and people have to accept that no, hundred percent. I mean, look at the look at the hockey game. You know, us and X. It was one against two, I believe. And even lacrosse, like I believe BC High was three. I want to say, mm -hmm. yeah, they, they right. were up. They were up there. They're high, but I mean, it's they do a good job. They do a good job. Yeah. That stuff. Can't complain. Are you a lacrosse like fan beyond just your team? Like, were you keeping up with lacrosse around the state? For the most part, yeah. Yeah. What was what was the most interesting part of the, like other divisions in the tournament? Did you see anything that was like? surprising to you or exciting i was i think it was interesting the um medfield and i believe it was the norwell game mm. my uh, i got a couple of buddies on medfield um luke murphy going to loyola and uh, tj casey going to umass you know i was really i was really hoping they pulled off room for them but that, that was an interesting game i wish i went to a couple of them i wish i went to some uh, other championship games to see what it's like not playing in them but you know that's uh that's for next year when the boys get back to it so yeah, I'm I'm big fans uh, of a lot of those Medfield guys. But the one thing I'll say is they were ragging on Dover Sherborne um, last year. DS was the D3 champs and they're going, oh, Mickey Mouse ring. If you win Mickey Mouse, this, that um, guess who Dover Sherborne beat in the championship? Norwell. So then Medfield. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's supposed That's to be ironic. their year. It's supposed to be Medfield's big year. Right. Yep. They make it all the way to the state championship. They haven't won one since like. 2016 or 2017 even though they're like a great program and mm -hmm. they face norwell who's supposed to be this mickey mouse team and they kind of got blown out a little bit 
So I don't know what happened there. I know that they're Fogo, they're goalie. They've got like an insane squad, but got to, got to respect those guys. Can't, can't do. think it's going to be light work. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. I agree with that. Luke Murphy was like, I saw him play against Dover Sherburn. And the way he shoots, it's just, he's just unreal. He just, you, like, know, his old, you know, his older brother. Yeah. What's his name? He's a, uh, oh, he's good friends. Owen with, uh, yeah. He's like best friends with this guy, uh, Mitchell Gonza, who I had on the podcast. Um, Cause he's a medfield guy too. He's a Harvard football player. And that like, they're just like, what does he, does he play for Maryland? He just won the NCAAs. <laughs> I went 18 and 0 and won the natty. <laughs> Is he's that good? He's yeah. Oh my God. He shoots, he shoots the hell out of the ball. Both of them. Luke's got a great shot. I mean, it's so fun. Yeah, uh, he was on my 3D team, so we would play together, you know, every summer since, like, eighth grade. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. there was – Medfield and Dover Sherbert are traditional rivals, and there was one point someone's like – I did, like, a question and answer on my Instagram, or I was like, I was, oh, who should I, like, interview? And someone said Medfield, and I made a joke. It turned out to be not even a very accurate joke. I go, oh, yeah, if I want to talk to, the, like – I'd love to talk to, the, like, the best one-sport athletes in the state. Which is like I at the time I thought not a lot of them played multiple sports. Turns out I was wrong. Someone I think it was Caleb Lawson. I don't know if you know him. Um, he was he's a good player for them. I, think I know the, I might know the name, but I can't put a, I can't put a face with it right now. Yeah, he basically DM'd me and was like, "Who's the one sport athlete?" And I couldn't name anyone. Like I named <laughs> a kid, and he was like, "No, he plays golf, like all that." Um, but then so they rinsed DS. They killed DS. Murder oh. him twice. Flannel yeah. uploads a highlight, and one of the kids comments. Uh, I think it was Brendan. Oh no, Wallace. He comments one sport athletes in quotation marks. He is like the Albert Einstein of proving other people's points. <laughs> the one sport was lacrosse. Why yeah. would a good video of you playing lacrosse like negate that argument? So that was, I thought, a terrible take from him. He should have just been like, "We crushed DS," and that would have been true. But one sport uh-huh. athlete. It applies. That was the one sport was lacrosse. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Props to them though for uh, kicking Dover Sherburn's ass. I guess maybe next year. But uh, did you do you play club with those guys? Yeah, three D. We had a, our club team. There was like yeah, I think there was six of us on St. John's that would play at three D. Everybody else in the ISL. So every other kid on that team is in the ISL. So besides TJ and Luke. Yeah. What What is it like? I mean, I guess I already asked about the ISL. That's kind of interesting. Um, what, what, you know, do you guys travel like around? Is it like basketball, AAU, like a circuit? Do you travel around the country and like play in front of coaches? How does that work for three days? Yeah, no. So, I mean, it starts in June. So it's already, it's, well, I don't, of course I'm not playing the summer because, you know, I'm going to college, but it starts in June. You know, you do uh, five or six tournaments from, New York to Connecticut to Florida to Maryland to who God knows <laughs> doesn't matter. This little this little patch of grass and everybody just shows up. It's it's unreal. It's it's fun though. It's fun. You know the driving sucks, but you know once you're there with your boys, playing three games a day, mm. getting food, waking up early in the morning the next day, going back seeing them. It's fun, and that's you know something that I'll never forget. What's it like playing as a – oh, sorry, cut you off. What were you saying? No worries. I was just going to say, somewhere across this, how it goes. The summer circuit, it's always fun. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I was curious to get into it. What is it like playing as a lefty and with the lefty shot? Do you think that gives you an advantage over the goalie because they're less used to seeing that kind of a shot? It, de- it, de- it depends. Um, I don't I – don't, that's hard to say. I don't think so. It definitely – it's definitely fun being a lefty because there's not so many of them, you know, being one of the, being a good lefty is always nice because, you know, there's not a ton, but um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's really special having, you know, your righty shooters and then a lefty shooter, you know, I like shooting underhand, like that's kind of like unconventional sometimes, but it's always, it's always nice to see. I don't think it's too much of an advantage except say a lot of, I feel like a lot of goalies are right-handed. So being able to be a lefty and then shoot it to the same corner is much, much easier than uh, trying to pick the other corner. I don't know. It's interesting. You know, you can play around with it a little bit, but I would say, I would say it's fun. It's, and it's definitely different. Yeah. What's your favorite dodge? Man, I don't know. I would say, I would say last year I'd probably, you know, you know, left to right split, maybe a roll back, but uh, you know, this year, 
the way our team played. I was playing up top above the net rather than playing the back at X. Uh, maybe, maybe the answer, or uh, I don't know, since, you know, I put on some height, put on some weights this last year. So being able to just run through some people is always fun. So, yeah. What was the decision like to commit to Providence? Why is that the place for you? Well, first off, I would say the coaching staff that was there at the time, Coach Gould, Coach Gabrielli, Coach Francis, they're studs. You know, I, I went down, I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with the campus. I fell in love with those guys. And, you know, it's, it's tough to say that they're not there anymore. You know, they moved on. But, you know, we have Coach, uh, coach Benson coming in from Maryland, offensive. Uh, he was the associate head coach there. So, I mean, I, I can't be more thrilled. I spoke with him a couple hours ago. So, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And I'd say it's – it's so similar to the prep, you know, I went there, everybody's so close, you know, it's not a huge school. So, you know, you get to know a lot of people and everybody just, everybody just wants to see you succeed. So it's also not far, you know, a big part of my recruiting process was I didn't want to go, you know, six hours, you know, down South. I wanted to stay in new England. Yeah. So, nice. I, I lucked out with this. So. What town are you from? Linfield, Linfield, Mass. No kidding. Yeah. My mom and cousin, my uh, cousin re who re actually recently graduated, she was there like a year ago, both went to PC and absolutely loved it. Like, yep. that's one of those schools where you just like you hear it's like almost always like super positive. Oh, how do you like problems? Yeah. Oh, my God. It's amazing. Like it's kids love it there. Oh, I, I, I haven't heard a bad thing about it. I haven't heard a bad thing about it. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, they made a little tourney run too in uh, basketball. Were you, were oh, you oh, that was on fun. that? Yeah. Got my uh, my classic Sham God shirt on Ooh. the wall. So that's always nice. Got to represent them. You know, I uh, I remember going on my uh, my visit there, and I actually I was eating lunch, and I look over, it's Coach Ed right there. I was like, holy crap! Like that guy's a stud. Yeah. So yeah, he's a little intimidating, but it was that yeah, was nice. The way it, I mean, the way I've talked to a lot of college athletes and um, and I was a college athlete at one point, but that's kind of besides the point. And the like seeing the basketball coach and basketball players, like that's going to be so routine for you because you honestly will probably end up being friends with a lot of guys on like hockey team or basketball. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like all the athletes at college just kind of run in the similar circle. So I bet I'd right. be willing to bet you're going to see a lot more of that of uh, those kind of guys. Oh yeah. That'd, that'd be cool. You know, being boys with a basketball player, there's uh, there's worse things in the world than that. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I like it though. I don't like feeling too short next to those guys. So <laughs> the guys are huge. Oh my God. Yeah. How do you think? Cause I'm, you know, I, I've done some lacrosse interviews, but I'm not as well versed in it. What's the role of height at different positions in lacrosse and like size? I would say size definitely plays a role in every position. I mean, being a, being a long pole, being, you know, Connor Kelly going to Richmond, great kid. He's, I believe, six four. That kid's reach with us with, you know, his length and then with the six foot pole. I mean, he can, you know, he can be on your hands and you know, he'd be possibly like 10 feet away from you. Yeah. So it's absolutely unreal. I mean, being it being an attackman too, I mean, you having good height, you know, you have the ability to shoot over defenders, you know, just have better vision on the field. So I would say it definitely plays a role. Yeah. Like, do you know Pierce Gregory? Yeah, I was uh, talking to him a little while ago. Yeah, no kidding. Yes, yeah, so obviously he's a, a guy. No, he's a pal, and mm -hmm. he's like a smaller attackman, but he kind of makes it work. He kind of like is shifty, can make moves. I know he's in the weight room. I know he's getting bigger. Um, so he's like he's solidly built, but it's just always is interesting to me the different kind of body types that guys make work, and they kind of can conform. You know, if you're like Pierce, I mean, I don't know if you just saw Flano post a video of him. I was like, just gonna bring that breaking, up. Breaking, not legs. Like, this that. Pierce just broke someone's not ankles, but like their fucking tibia. The they way he crossed the net. Ball. I mean, that is like you do that on the cross, and that's oh, so satisfying. There's <laughs> nothing. There's nothing better than seeing or doing that to somebody. I'll tell you that. Making somebody fall on the net like that. It's every attackman's dream. Yeah, a hundred percent. And then Flano, I, did Flano uh, post any videos for you guys this year? He, I know he, oh, which one? He, I know he went, he went to Hingham, I believe. No, I know he went to Needham. I know yeah. he went to the Needham game. I think he made, yeah, I know Needham. He could have went to the Hingham game, I'm pretty sure. I know he texted me before the Needham game, so I know he was there, but I, he didn't go to a ton of games, which is, you know, which is fine, but 
Yeah. The, he's I, awesome. I love watching his, I love watching his edits. Yeah. He's, he's very talented. I was surprised at the volume that he actually came out with, with high school lacrosse videos, just because he's like the official Harvard lacrosse, like videographer now. So he was traveling with the team going to like, it was like Michigan or Ohio state or wherever one of those was in a way. And then like in the NCAA championship, like he, I mean, that's a full-time job. So the fact that he was still out to games, I was like crazy, but I'm sure he would have, if he was like last year, he probably would have come out to even more of you guys. Cause me and him just kept talking about SJP's a wagon going to be tough, tough to stop just shit like that. Yeah. And I mean, I did read off uh, Flano's a uh, little blurb with the playoffs. He had us losing to AB you gotta Are love really? that stuff oh i yeah i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure <laughs> pretty sure that uh he said that but hey that stuff like i said earlier it only makes you want to win more it only makes it only motivates you so it's always nice seeing that stuff he might he might have been was he one for four because i know he had medfield and dover sherburn picks to win so that would okay. be divisions one three and four he was wrong he might have picked wait did, did wakona beat uh long meadow no, I think Longmeadow won a double overtime, I'm pretty sure. It was eight to nine. One of them, was it Wakona or Longmeadow that won? I'm I mean, bust out wait. the gram. That could have been the Bill Ricca game. Wait, where am I gonna? F- um, let's see. Uh, yeah, Longmeadow beat Redding in the semis. And then someone watching this is just like screaming at the screen because they it's so obvious to them. <laughs> Longmeadow. Let me look at Longmeadow state champs. So are you getting uh, like, when does the third ring come? I, Do you have I, to I, buy them? <laughs> is, there, or is it through the MIA? Is it through the school? Who makes no, it? No, the school... The school hooks it up. We get it from this vendor. I believe it's let me see, it's Justin's. They do a great job. Uh, no, we the school pays for some of it, and then you got to be chipping a little bit. But you know, it's it's nice customizing them, so that's always fun. Yeah, I was actually talking to uh, one of the uh, coaches today about it. We got some uh, we got some stuff in the works. It should be pretty cool. I'm excited. Oh, oh, I like the sound of that. Long oh, Meadow yeah. beats Bill Ricca, Division Two champs. Yeah, that makes sense. So I think, I think he had, I think Flano had long middle pick. They have a prov commit, province commit, Richie, my boy, Richie Joseph. Shout out. Yep. Stop. Who, who was the best defender that you were personally like, oh, this guy's like, this guy's hard to get by that you faced all season, would you say? I'd say the game that sticks out is the AB game. Obviously, I, I don't even I didn't have a point at that game. I'd also throw in the defenders on my team. Going against them in practice is never fun. You know that's the hardest, hardest, hardest part about the season is you know going against those guys in practice, them making us better. Um, us going against them, you know, it's uh I'd say Connor Kelly's up there. That kid, mm. he's unreal. I mean. He's played great. I believe the um, Jake Gilbert, you know, Jake Gilbert, Fairfield guy, going to Fairfield next year. He uh, uh-huh. did very well against him this year. Um, I believe the kid on hang I think his name's Henry Crean, played well against him in the semifinals. I um, mean, Connor gets every – oh, the kid um, meet him, going to uh, Brian Pisano, Nick, Nick Pisano. I don't have to pass yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he gets every, you know, big name attack when he just just shuts him down. Plays a phenomenal against them. Yeah, that's wild too when it's, some guys just rise to that level. Like if you give them a guy like this is your assignment, they will – they'll just ride. They'll ride. 100%. 100%. They'll make, they'll make it. They'll make it fucking happen. What – um. What made you commit? I th- I'm sure this is, I can't believe I'm only asking this now because I'm sure it's been on everyone's mind that is like me, sort of an outside observer, doesn't know you. Why was it college lacrosse and not college hockey for you? How did you decide? Uh, well, my, well, so the goal was to play college hockey up until eighth grade. And then, you know, when I was five feet in eighth grade, you know, that dream kind of faded away. But then all of a sudden, you know, now I'm 
six one. I'm a little bigger now, so we didn't really uh, pursue any. Like I didn't play fall hockey, freshman, sophomore, junior year. I would just go right into the season and play. Uh, my junior year, I fractured my collarbone, so I played two games. So I literally had one season of varsity hockey at St. John's, and that's how it went. But um, I don't know. I it's very it's easier to play college across than college hockey because you know you don't got to do the juniors or PG year or you know this or that. But um, you know, I don't know. I I love hockey and I'm gonna miss it. Yeah, you know, but I don't know. It's uh, I don't know. I, I don't, I can't I can't put into words. I don't know why. Yeah, I, just, I feel like it's just easier, and that's just the way it, it lined up. So it's in it's well, it's interesting because it sounds like fate almost pushed you into this position. Like it 100%. wasn't it wasn't gonna be probably an easy decision either way to pick between lacrosse and hockey, and the way the cards were dealt kind of went in that direction. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, if you want to play division of hockey, you got to do at least, you know, two years of juniors. You know, you're a 21 year old freshman. So you finish college, you're 24, 25. You can register. It's, it's college hockey is a crazy path. Yeah. And uh, so I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to be more thrilled with my decision, though. Probably it's going to be sick. I'm pumped for it. Yeah, for sure. What, I mean, lacrosse, college lacrosse, especially, is just like blowing up lately. Like people, I think yep. you got to remember just, 10 years ago like 2012 or like 2005 how much like lacrosse was it was big if you were in like baltimore or long island but it's the amount of teams the amount of youth programs the amount of people that are fans of the sport has just exponentially grown the last 10 or 15 years like what yeah. what is your thoughts on the future of lacrosse it's only gonna get bigger i mean paul rabel with the pll that he's absolutely killing it i mean for him to you know just make a league like that out of the blue, just CEO of it. I mean, it's, it's unreal. He's doing a great job. He's got advertisements. He's got a movie come out on him. I mean, it's, you see it everywhere now and it's hard not to be a fan of it. I mean, the fast paced games, like it's, it's awesome. I don't know why uh, it hasn't been so big already, but you know, it's only going to get better. More kids yeah. are going to start playing it. More schools are going to have better teams. Kids are going to start picking it up. So I, I'm excited. I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah, and that's uh, – I was having a conversation with my uncle, and he watches the PLL. Interesting. Oh, actually, I forgot to say, my uncle, Jim Frame, shout out, SJP lacrosse alum. Uh, he wanted, man. Me to wish you, uh, wanted me to wish you uh, congratulations on the title. Thank you. Thank you so much. means a lot. appreciate that. Yeah, I think that's a lot of uh, former uh, players. SJP were just stoked. He, like, lives in Vermont now. He was there. You know, I don't know when he graduated, right? But a um, long time ago, I think a lot of alumni are talking and they're excited to, to see the success you guys had. Oh, I mean, that's that's crazy. That's We love, you know, we get alumni back every practice. We got guys coming to our games, uh, practicing with us, you know, throwing on the helmets and gloves, you know, shooting the shit with us. That's awesome. You know, Coach Pinchon stresses about that a lot. You know, guys coming back, he loves it. It just, and they join the circle. It's awesome. They break it down. It's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's nice to come back to, and I'm looking forward to doing it next year. For sure. And so your younger brother, what grade is he in? He is, oh, God. Seventh, <laughs> he's he's going to be a seventh grade. You're on the grade spot. Now. You're on the spot right now. I know, I know, I know. No, he's going to be a seventh grade next year. He's a great kid. He's a goalie. Yeah. So What's I get his birthday? Grade, Do you know his birthday? birthday? September 16th, 2010. Yeah, 10. There you go. Crazy. The year before the Bruins won it, so. <laughs> It's a good time step. That's my dad couldn't remember my, uh, like his wedding anniversary or my mom's oh God. birthday, whatever it was. So he would just like, he knew that it was like in May and that it was Peyton Manning's number. So he was just like, that's that, that's he our missed. anniversary. Like whatever. Yeah. Got to create a little acronym or something for that. Like a little trick to remember it. <laughs> well, yeah. Sports guys just using the noggin. Exactly. Using the noggin man. So yeah, I was going to ask, cause I, I, mean, I don't know. It sounds like your brother was a, a great hockey player as well. Yep. Yeah. He wanted his, he made it as a sophomore year before I did. He always, he always jokes with me about that, but you know, he's great hockey, but I learned so much from him. I mean, we would go up on the tennis court, rip pucks, you know, Shiraki, roller hockey, you know, hit the wall. I mean, it's, we always joke about, you know, if we didn't have that tennis court up there, you know, what would we be, you know, today? So it's always nice, you know, giving him a hug after the game, seeing him in the stands of the garden, it was it's re it's really nice. It's awesome. Yeah. So do you do you see that kind of future for your younger brother? Is he a, is he a, an athlete as well? Oh yeah, he's he's an athlete. 
He, uh, he'll, he'll play at the prep. You know, I'm curious to see what happens with him. He's a goalie, which is crazy. I mean, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to be getting shot on by kids. So but I don't know how he does it. He, uh, his team just unfortunately lost in their little championship the other day. So that's always tough, but it's nice. I get to shoot on him all the time. Just nice. Gotta, it's just nutty to be a goalie, like wanting to like being like welcoming those shots, dude. Oh god, I I, I mean I'll be I'll be a fiddlestick goalie like in the backyard with a tennis ball. But, I mean, put me in that, but you know when these kids are twelve yards away ripping shots, you know eighty five miles an hour, you know, I'm I'm fine. You know I'd rather I'd rather shoot than be shot at. So yeah, one thing that is has been I don't know. I mean, it's always been a debate, but it's been at the forefront more this year because a lot of the private schools, private Catholic schools have had a lot of success. People mm-hmm. debating it on Twitter, um, you know, just the conversations. Um, I asked the Malden Catholic basketball team about this after their D2 championship, and they had an interesting answer. What do you feel about the debate about MIAA public schools playing against private schools. Do you think it's fair that a St. John's prep that has kids from Linfield, kids from all over can play against a public high school? Uh, I mean, I don't see why not, you know, we don't recruit, you know, we're not an ISO school, you know, we're not, you know, giving kids aid and stuff like that to come to our school. It, kids just come because, you know, they want to be a part of something special. And, you know, you see like, look at Hingham that they, they made it to the semifinals. They're a sick team. I mean, look at, um, look at Braintree hockey. Like that, that was one of the hardest teams we played against, if not the hardest, you know, I, I believe if we didn't win it, then they would have. So I, I think, you know, those, those public schools have something special. They've been playing together for, you know, 10, 12 years. And that's something you don't get at a private school. Ooh. Yeah, that is, I hadn't considered that. There's yeah. A, if you're growing up with kids, that chemistry you're building is that like advantage you have over guys that met each other like two years ago or something. Mm-hmm. Huh. That's interesting. Does it upset you or irritate you when people are like questioning that? No, no. I think it's haters. Anything to knock us down the peg. So, I mean, it's in one ear and out the other. So I don't, don't think about it too much. Yeah. That's funny. And it's, you pointed out, we were talking before the interview that on your path to the state championship, you faced basically like all private schools. Yeah. I mean, Hmm. I mean, not for Needham, hockey, but like, not Needham in, in lacrosse, but you played like BC High, like a lot of teams like CM. Yep. Um, I mean, I don't, I honestly don't think, you know, there, I don't think there's a correlation between, you know, if you're public or private, you know, that doesn't, I don't think that relates to sports. That's just me. I mean, people might laugh at that just because, you know, I go to prep and that's how it goes, but I don't, I don't see anything wrong with that. Fascinating. Yeah. I just, yeah, so many different matchups. And you wonder what it would look like without the private schools. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Like, JP, if you guys were in the ISL or something and you could recruit and you could do stuff like that. It's- I mean, I believe, I believe we indirectly recruit. You know, they see us win so much. You know, why wouldn't you want to go there and be a part of that? You know, it's not like the coaches are, you know, hitting kids up, you know. They see the stuff that, you know, Flano makes, that Brandy makes, Brando, stuff like that. Like, yeah. who wouldn't want to be a part of that? Who wouldn't want to, you know, win a ring or, you know, go to school and play at the garden, stuff like that. So Yeah, commit to play D1 as well, get looks, of coaches, stuff like that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, what was the recruitment process for you like? Where did, you know, where when did you start getting those looks and those conversations? And, like, where did they discover you at, like, 3D showcases? Or was it yeah, puddle 100%. tapes from high school? Uh, I would, so uh, the summer circuit is just flooded with college coaches, you know, specifically our 3D team went to this, um, went to, so, okay, so there's a commitment rule across, you can't commit or coaches cannot talk to you besides, uh, you know, like the Navy and Army besides, so they can't call you or talk to you um, prior to September 1st of your junior year. And so my three, my summer team, we went down to Maryland. And we played on August 31st and we played like three games at night, like nine, 10, 11 o'clock. And I just remember driving home, you know, getting like a couple of phone calls from coaches at like 1230 and I'm trying to sleep. Uh, that's always cool. I mean, it's fun to say, but I mean, no, the, the, the recruitment process was interesting. You know, seeing every um, 
you know, different approaches that coaches would take, you know, how they talk to you, how they text you, you know, if they ask about your family and, um, you know, how do they talk to you? Not about sports, like other stuff, like, you know, what you do today, how was school, how's this and that, like getting to truly know you. So that's something that I uh, really, really looked for. You know, mm-hmm. if they, if they cared about, you know, the recruit outside of, you know, that sport. So. Yeah. What it, is it weird at all committing somewhere and then a new coach coming in? I mean, obviously Maryland, like that's like <laughs> pretty insane. Like that's yeah. about as good as your new coach could get like that. Uh-huh. I'm sure that's like, Hey, the new coach is like a stud, but is yeah. that what, it, what like, what is, have you gotten to talk to the new coach? Is it built a little bit of a relationship? Yeah. Well, first, I mean, it's, it was definitely weird, you know, waking up and seeing, you know, province you know coaches resigned but uh, I don't know it was um I wasn't too nervous because I know that province would draw you know um some good um some good coaches but I don't know I was I was a little scared to be quite honest with you I was like all right why aren't they naming a coach like like what's going on with this I got questions I gotta ask them like what's going on but then I believe we were playing Needham and somebody goes they just hired Benson I was like are you serious like that yeah. that's unreal like we I lucked out like that's so awesome and I spoke with him earlier today. Um, great guy. Looking forward to it. You know, he's in the middle of moving up here from uh, Baltimore. Mm-hmm. So I kept a brief, let him uh, let him get off early. But, you know, it's uh, it's good. I'm, I'm going to be more thrilled. With yeah. what we have. That's insane. Do you see any future in yourself? I mean, you're a guy that loves hockey, loves lacrosse. Do you think you'll, you know, whether it's just coaching your kids or like coaching a high school team? Or do you, do you see a future or maybe staying involved with lacrosse and being a coach? Uh, hundred percent, but I feel it depends what level, mm-hmm. because, you know, I don't want to be reaming out eight-year-olds, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be getting on this yeah. kid's, I don't want to be getting on this kid enough. He can't take it, but hundred percent, you know, I've always thought that I, I always believe that I think similar to the coaches that I've always had. So I would, you know, for sure, you know, envision coaching my kid and, you know, hockey or relax or whatever, actually, I'm not going to be coaching sports. I didn't play. But you know what I mean? Uh, of course, yeah. like my dad, my dad was my coach until eighth grade. You know, it's obviously wouldn't be here without him. He's a stud too. We played the game, played hockey and lacrosse at the prep. So, I mean, it's, yeah, I, w- I would definitely say that I'm going to be a coach. When or did, try to do my best to be one. Yeah. When did you move over to SJP? What grade did you start? So I, uh, I just went there for high school. That's it. Oh, no kidding. Because I know, didn't yeah. they just add sixth grade or something? They've had, so my, the kids in my grade were the first um, kids in the middle school. So I have buddies that have been there six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Oh. And I, uh, no shade at the prep, obviously. I wouldn't want to do that. I'd rather stay with my buddies and then go there for high school. You know what I mean? But, you know, it's, they turned out fine. Obviously, they're good guys. But um, I know, honestly, you got to think, like, from a money standpoint, that's, that's expensive. Mm. you know to do seven years at a private school and then send your kid off to college I mean that's that's something special you know that's the, their parents making a big sacrifice for them so yeah. Kudos to them. yeah yeah that's true yeah it's a lot so yeah that's if, if you add up that's seven 11 years of <laughs> paying for school that's brutal. Yeah. that's tough oh my goodness what have you, it's kind of funny when we hopped on, like, what have you been up to? So you said you've just been replaying the state championship in your head. I mean, you're done with school. You're done with sports. Do you, have you started a, like a job or internship or anything yet? Have you just been like hanging out, just like, you know, embracing the, uh, embracing the, the end of all the, you know, just those special moments? Yeah. I mean, I, so the game was what, two days ago yesterday. We didn't do anything. I mean, I work at, I work at a golf course in caddy. I work in the pro shop. So that's always fun. Again, they're gonna play there for free is awesome, but just just thinking about it, I mean, it's it's hard not to think about it when you still have the trophy. So, I mean, it's uh, it's 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 a weird time because you know after hockey it was it was weird because I you know we had the the game was a Sunday and you know, we had trials on Monday, so it was uh, it was tough. You know, you couldn't really relive it and enjoy it as much. Obviously, we did though. It was awesome. I don't know. This was uh, this was this was a different one because I have nothing to do. I haven't started work yet. That starts up next week, so you know I got some time to myself. I get to you know, chill and relax, and you know, not go run around for three hours and hit a lift before that. So it's always mm-hmm. nice. What's one thing that you would like to improve on in your game before you get to or at college? Like, 
what do you need to add to the bag or improve on if you're going to, you know, really compete the way you want to compete at Providence and D1 lacrosse? Yeah. Um, I, you can never go wrong with, you know, your foot speed and doing the ladders, jumping rope, that stuff always helps. You know, I'm a big believer in that. So um, I would say that obviously in dodging, I mean, you can never be too good at dodging, right? Like you see Pierce breaking ankles like that. That's every <laughs> athlete's dream or attacking dream, excuse me. But yeah, I would say just keep doing what I've been doing, you know, keep working, stay committed, you know, be in the weight room, eat right, sleep well, stuff like that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, favorite question to ask can be sports related or just personal. What's the biggest misconception about Tommy Sarney? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I feel like I've been told I come across as like intimidating sometimes, you know, a couple of my guys before I met them, but I completely disagree with that. You know, you get to know me. I'm a likable guy. Uh, yeah, I feel like you're very, around. I feel like you're very friendly. I just met you an hour ago. You're very, I think yeah. friendly. I mean, of, of course, you know, I freshman would come in and be like, like, oh, like, that's Tommy. Sorry. I'm going to scare him. And I, I just go up to him, you know, give him a hug, you know, stuff like that. Ask him what he had for lunch, you know, stuff like that. Um, yeah. I mean, not too, I don't, wouldn't say there's not too many misconceptions, you know, I'm not scary at all. Like, look at me. I got a buzz cut. So <laughs> nobody's afraid of a kid with a buzz cut. Right. So <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know. So damn. What do you play a fall sport? I would, I would play fall hockey. I played fall hockey this year, but that's yeah. about it. Yeah. I was going to say, if you did play like through prep, if you played a fall sport, what would it be? Golf. Golf. Oh, that makes 100%. sense. 100%. God, I love it. Are you a God, good golfer? You. Are you a good Thanks golfer too? You know, there's, uh, I'm like, I'm what they call a, a practice hero. So I'm a, I'm a golf range hero, you know, hitting off the turf is way easier than playing on the course, obviously. But, you know, I, uh, I go out there and play, play with my buddies for fun. I mean, three of my, two of my best friends were on the prep golf team. So playing with them is fun, but minus the golf part of it, because, you know, they're ripping the ball, you know, on an absolute line and I'm, you know, picking up, you know, dropping with them. So now I'm more of a social golfer more than a serious guy. So I'd say that. Yeah, that makes, that makes sense. What would your advice be to a, like a young, young lacrosse player listening to this that wants to kind of do what you did? You they want to win you know state tillies they want to they want to go d1 for lacrosse what's your advice to someone to get to where you're at right now um i don't know i would just stay committed to the grind i mean if you don't love practicing and love working out if you don't love all the stuff off camera then i don't know what you're doing because that has to be, you know, the most fulfilling stuff, you know, doing something in practice and then translating that to a game. That's always special. But I would say just, you know, put your head down and work. You know, it doesn't matter who's watching. You don't have to document it, put on your stories and stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. that, that doesn't win you anything, you know, showing people that, you know, taking shots after practice. I would, I would, yeah, I would just say, you know, keep your head down and work, you know, stay committed to the process, committed to the grind, embrace it because it's not going to last forever. I remember being a freshman and it just flew by. So, yeah, I like what you said about, you know, not, not just like when people are watching, not just for that, because it's like Pierce was one of my earliest interviews, actually. He, he comes from a real lacrosse family. His brother, like Grant, uh, played for BU. He was a great player at DS. And he was like growing up, it was like he'd see his older brother you know, snowstorm Massachusetts. And he would literally go and like shovel the grass to be able to just get a few feet where he could take rip shots and press in the middle of winter, freezing outside and how Pierce learned to like embrace that mindset into his, you know, in, mm -hmm. into his work ethic. That's, and would like just all the people I talked to are wildly successful. Like, I mean, sometimes you're just a, a freak athlete but it doesn't seem like that's the case with lacrosse, like in basketball or, you, you know, you can be seven feet tall in football. You can be six foot six built like Gronkowski. But I think, exactly. 
I, I think there's a lot of guys, I, you know, I don't want to overstate that because I know basketball and football, yeah. a lot of the guys are doing the same shit you're doing, but it's an interesting thing with lacrosse that that skill is something that you're not born with. No, no, I, have, I would, I would say in my case, I'm very blessed to have what I have with my athletic ability, but you know, it's, it's not like, you know, I just spawned and became good. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's that, you know, people don't see and um, which is which is fine because you don't want to document everything. You know, being in your element on your own, there's literally nothing better than that. You know, competing against yourself outside shooting, there's nothing better than that. It's always fun. It's and it's 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 rewarding. Like I said earlier, seeing something you do in practice like that goal against Singham. I don't know if you might not know what, I, what I'm talking about. I caught it. I hitched and just shot it like. We've done that in practice maybe a thousand times with attack shooting. So it's, it's stuff like that that we love, that, that, you know, guys like me love. So, Do you think that goal is, like, one of the memories that's going to stay with you the most about this run? Um, what, what will stand out to you? What, which memories do you think about this season? I would say the game versus Franklin. Um. I believe it was we won fourteen to thirteen, and I was I believe that was one of my best games. I think I had six goals in it, so that was fun. We won with the second. I scored the second left, and we won. Um, beating BC High three times is always fun. Um, I don't know. I don't just. Just it's hard. It's hard to it's hard to see. It's hard to explain. I mean, Needham was a good game. That was fun. I would say Hingham. I would say, hmm. I remember being in the first quarter against Hingham. And I took a shot, and I heard somebody in the student section yell, "Nice shot, Sarney." Not, and I was like, "All right, it's gonna be like it's gonna be like one of those games." So that was pretty. That was pretty memorable. I, I mean, I love that stuff. I mean, you, you gotta love that stuff. People want to see. People want to see you fail. I mean, that should only motivate you more. But I would say, Bill and Rico was a fun game. Bill Rick was a good game. I mean, they have a great goalie and Scotty. He's going up, Brian. Uh, he's a 23, so he'll be there when I'm a sophomore at Providence. So, I mean, I, I can't pick out a single game and say this game was the best because of, you know, X, Y, and Z. But it all just kind of, you know, blends in together. And just – it's just a great memory to have, you know. Especially winning – especially winning every game after losing two in a row. That was pretty special. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. And you wonder, yeah, it's just it's a comeback. There's so many moments when you, like, break it down like that. Um, and that – I wonder the people out there, the Flanos start to doubt you guys <laughs> after AB. Like, yeah, it's too bad that there's not more lacrosse media too because I think that stuff's fun. Like, in basketball, there's a lot of articles and predictions and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very fascinating very fascinating do you watch the pll do you have a team yeah, i usually do i usually do i mean i i'm a big redwoods guy because i i grew up you know radic ernst coached me in some 3d tournament and uh, jules hennenberg got his phone number too so it's it's nice watching the, the woods um but they're not doing so hot right now so i gotta stick with the atlas i like watching them jeff yeah. t's pretty, jeff t's pretty good so is that is 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 that at all in the crystal ball? You think in your future the PLL? No, no. Oh, no. I I'd have to college going to work, going to work. You know that's why I'm playing college lacrosse so I could get into a school that I couldn't get into without it. So, Ooh. I mean, going hopefully doing something good, doing something that I love. So. Yeah. Do you have any ideas of like ideal jobs or industries you'd want to be in? Yeah, I'm going to be a finance major, and um, I don't know. So the the healthcare field right now, you know, is always you know can always um, do well, do good stuff in there. My aunt is a big, and she's a chief of nurses for Leahy Health, so that's always fun. Yeah, I can hear about that stuff. I don't know, just I'd like to think I'm a math guy, but uh, some people may disagree with that. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. I I would say my dream job. Oh, well, obviously anybody can say, you know, making a crap ton of money in crypto, but that's not, it's not my crypto thing. trader. 
Uh, you know, I, I wait. Did to you my see what happened? Did you see what happened to Trevor Lawrence? Didn't he get his signing bonus in Bitcoin or some shit like that? And it was like twenty four million, and someone I don't know. I was like, he posted something, or someone posted an article like his twenty four million dollars signing bonus is now like worth nine million. <laughs> That's I don't know why he's doing that. Uh, like just, just take the money and then invest it. I, I don't see the difference in that. So yeah, I like take some of it, maybe put it there. 100%, That's like smart. 100%. Fuck. It's I mean, hey, but then if it had gone crazy again, like who knows? Crypto's so much less predictable. It could have gone bananas, yeah. and then he'd be like, Oh, I have a hundred million dollars now. How about that? Biggest signing bonus in history or whatever. You know what I mean? Like that, mm-hmm. that's, who knows? Yeah. So you, yeah, you were saying, are you, are you into investments and things like that? I, I am into it, but I don't invest. You know, I got, I got no, I'm a college, I'm a high school kid right now. So I got no, uh, no free money to, you know, start throwing around in the right. stock market. But I, I, I follow it. I think it's interesting. You know, yeah. seeing this, have you ever seen a movie called the big short? Yeah. I love that movie. That movie. See that movie's like, you know, I, I, I really like that. We watched it in my econ class. No, I think I watched it when I went home again that day. So that's always, that's always fun. I mean, The Wolf of Wall Street, also good movies. You know, that stuff's cool. Minus, you know, going to jail for it. So <laughs> that one, I, that's fun fun movie. Movie. working with money is something that I want to do. Yeah. A money man. Tommy, it's been an absolute pleasure. I am in awe of your talent and humility. Uh, last question. Give some shout outs. Who are we shouting out today? Who made this season special? Who are some oh, people? God. On the mind, give some uh, shout outs real quick. I could uh, go down the list. I'll go hockey first. Um, geez, I'm just going to go through the locker room. Um, Tommy Tillis, Michael Sheehan, Jeff and Joba, the Melanson twins, Theo, Rap, uh, Umla Brandano, Peyton. I mean, uh, the coaching staff, obviously, with the cross. Jimmy Ayers, my brother. I'm going to miss that kid terribly. Uh, I don't know where I'd be without that kid. Um, the coaches, obviously, um, the athletic training staff, they helped me a ton, you know. I've, uh, I've had a bad hamstring for quite a bit now, so they uh, they helped make sure I was doing well. Um, just uh, weight room staff, you know, Coach McSheffrey, Coach Anna, they helped us a ton. Uh, athletic directors, parents, I mean, the, the list goes on. We'd be here for hours, so <laughs> I, I'll stop it there for you, so. Yeah, word. Shout out all those people, man. Exactly. Tommy, thanks so much for coming on the Young Shakespeare podcast. Of course. Thank you for having me, Dan. This is awesome. You know, if you, I'll definitely come back on if you ever give me the time. So, you know, hit my line and I'll, I'll be sure to come back on. So, of course, dude. Yeah, we got to talk about how that freshman season goes, dude. Exactly. 100%, dude. Yeah. Thanks so much to Tommy Sarney for coming on this episode of the podcast. Thanks so much for everyone who's listening, liking, watching, and subscribing. And please, please tune in to the next episode of the podcast.